So welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, well, Emilia is going to introduce a bit also the the event, the whole project. But I will introduce Emilia. She's a lead scientist of the Humane Project, who is the the one also organizing uh, this whole event, uh, which is part of the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. Um, she's actually a lead this year from the from this department, because she also holds a position here as associate professor. Uh, leading the Music Information Research Lab of the Music Technology Group of the UPF. And her research is related to music information retrieval, and she's also interested on the interaction between humans and algorithms and the impact of artificial intelligence on our cognitive capabilities and, and decision making. She's also president of the International Society for Music Information Retrieval, and she's actually uh, now particularly involved in promoting the role of women in, in this field, in this technological field. So please uh, welcome Emilia on stage and, and see you also explain a bit about the context of the project and everything, please. Okay. Okay, good morning everyone. Thanks for coming and thanks Sergio for this uh, wonderful introduction. And uh, it's uh, for me a very pleasure to welcome you to, um, to the UPF and uh, also to this event, which is a collaboration between uh, uh, Pompeo Fabra University and the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. Uh, we are have been uh, collaborating for now over a year about on, the, this, uh, on this topic. Uh, particularly Barcelona MedTech uh, group here in the, in the at UPF, and uh, I would like to to just give a very very brief overview of uh, why we are here, why we are interested in that topic, and wha why we are trying to gather opinions and, and and insights from different experts on this area. So a project is called Humane, is is human behavior uh, and machine intelligence. And I will explain a bit uh, uh, why we do that. I mean, you, uh, many people are now talking about artificial intelligence, and uh, uh, this is the goal of uh, our discussion today. We see artificial intelligence as a very, uh, a very broad topic. It's uh, an area of research, in fact, and uh, it's a field of research. And in particular, we can define like, like these kind of systems or machines that can observe their, their environment and then can take uh, decisions uh, based on those observations to optimize or to, to reach a certain goal. So this is the, our definition of, uh, of artificial intelligence. And, uh, but as I say, there's no such a consensus of what AI uh, uh, is or how can we define it. At the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, we wrote a uh, report last year among all the reports that exist, ha trying to have an European perspective to, to, to AI and also the, um, the legal, ethical, economic and social impact because uh, some uh, literature considers artificial intelligence as uh, what we call a general purpose technology so that it can impact uh, an entire economy, it can impact society in a broader sense. So it's not something that will be used only in healthcare, it will be used in, the, in the music, that is my main uh, specialization field, and art, and it will be also used in criminal justice. So it's really something that is impacting our daily lives, and I'm sure you all have used it today uh, before coming here. And uh, we say that uh, um, artificial intelligence is different because uh, mainly the has developed a lot, and mainly in the, in the area of machine learning, some algorithms that have uh, become uh, more performant due to the combination of data, computation, and novel architectures based uh, on novel, novel uh, proposals can now address some cognitive tasks that until now were, were not reachable to, to, to be addressed in real world situations. You may know, for instance, the uh, face recognition applications, or these are audiovisual or audiovisual tasks that at, until now uh, or at in recent years, uh, we, we were not able to, to do in an automatic way. So this is the, some of the applications that you may have seen in the press or maybe has had a lot of impact in the, how this can be negative or positive. And so there is this always balance uh, between what these technologies can offer and also what, which other challenges when, when confronted. So uh, 
here we, we will focus today on, on medicine and uh, of course all, all these systems that take uh, information about the environment then decide or have some decisions are everywhere. So from now everyday uh, work or everyday life uh, when you try to find your way to come here <laughs> to more professional settings and uh, today we will focus on on, uh, on medicine and one of these uh, professional settings that uh, AI is impacted uh, sometimes in software programs, in mobile apps, or in embodied in social robots, and this will have also an effect on on how we uh, how we deal with that. So, as uh, Sergio, Sergio mentioned, our our project is uh, try to understand this uh, this uh, cognitive balance or this uh, this balance between human and machine intelligence because. Uh, um, Technologies can can offer uh, cognitive assistance to humans to perform certain tasks. They can help us to retrieve information in large scale data sets. They can help us to to have infinite memory and have all the storage possible. So it's very very powerful to enhance our, our understanding, our decisions, and uh, our, our our cognitive mind. And on the other hand, of course, is we if we use this uh, these uh, techniques, for instance, if we use uh, um, a map to come here, or if we use uh, something to retrieve information to search on the internet, this will also affect our decision making and also our way of uh, doing, or our way of taking our decision and our capabilities. So there's some discussion if uh, those te technologies may de-skill people and then we won't be able, for instance, to, to find our way anymore without a map or to maybe not uh, being able to, to decide which film we would like to see if we don't have a recommended system. So this is our, our project, uh, this is the main topic. We try to, um, uh, our, our, in our idea is that those systems will never be fully automatic, so there will be always a person uh, like uh, collaborating or cooperating with artificial intelligence systems. So we try to understand which are the best strategies for for human uh, human uh, algorithm or human machine uh, collaboration, and try to research on on these kind of topics. So uh, this is, as I say, this is um, uh, a project that is carried out at the Center for Advanced Studies uh, in the Joint Research Center. The Joint Research Center is a research center that is uh, inside the European Commission. The aim is to provide uh, independent advice to policymakers in the Commission. So we don't belong to any organization. We don't get funding. We are just inside one of the DGs of the Commission. And we try to address topics that are broader and need to be addressed from a broader per perspective, such as climate change or, uh, or artificial intelligence, consider also one, one challenge that we have to, to act together in, in Europe. So we. Uh, want to provide this European Center perspective, and uh, we work in uh, in Seville. Uh, we have a core team in Seville, in uh, south of Spain. So we are an interdisciplinary uh, team of researchers, and uh, some of us are, are. I'm a computer scientist. Uh, also, we have some economists. We have also uh, some psychologists. So. We are somehow uh, a team of uh, of people from different backgrounds, and then we collaborate with uh, with uh, researchers from different networks and from different. We we take part in different consortia, and one of the colla main collaborator is uh, Pompeu Fabra University here in, in Barcelona. And also, if you want to know more, Marius uh, Miron is around here. He's also from from our team. And we also organized a winter school uh, in Seville about uh, artificial intelligence and also this impact assessment uh, problems from the, from the ethical, social, legal, and, uh, and economic perspective. If you are interested, we will have another edition next year in, the, in, in January, February, still to decide the date. And we, we are working in different research topics. We have mostly in decision making uh, also, we do some work on children and how they interact with uh, social robots and when they learn. So we try to see also children, because they develop very fast, we can see the evolution of, uh, of, uh, of their behavior uh, faster than with adults that already have a very consolidated uh, way of working. Uh, we are also interested in the impact of AI on jobs and the tasks uh, we do uh, in our jobs. 
and this is one of the points we would like to address today. And finally, we also are interested about art and creativity and the use of uh, tools for, for that particular purpose. If you want to know more, uh, you can go to the website. We have some publications there. So I wanted to fit this with four points maybe to motivate the discussion and some of the starting points from our research. And these are mainly three points. The first thing is that artificial intelligence is not artificial. It's not maybe even intelligence. It's something that human creates. So there is this kind of... Uh, 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 sensation that this is something something magic <laughs> and this is something that we cannot understand so it's very important that to be aware that we uh, people create those systems we create the data we create uh, the interfaces and they are not perfect they inherited our imperfections and our biases and all our problems so we work a bit on the evaluation part we need to uh, Smarter systems need a smarter evaluation. This is also uh, uh, some uh, research from Marta Larson from uh, from from TU Delft that also works a lot on evaluation, and and she's always talking about the smarter we do our system, the smarter we need to research on on evaluating them, so that we don't consider only those systems work perfectly, but those systems should be fair, should be transparent, should be accountable, and this is the kind of research we do uh, now evaluating these kind of terms, and also to get into account if you have a system, and this is more the engineering perspective, who are the people affect, who, uh, who is the impact of, of the system that we'll have uh, when you put it into practice. So this is one point I, I wanted to make, maybe we, uh, we will discuss uh, today. The second one is that AI is very different from human uh, intelligence. So you might not expect to understand uh, the decisions taken by artificial intelligence. It's very difficult to put a human in the loop or a human to supervise because he might not expect certain behavior. So don't uh, consider that we can have always a supervision role in AI because we might have to supervise something that we cannot expect. And this is an example of a uh, very classical now example of, uh, of errors that, uh, that uh, computer vision systems can have uh, with very small uh, noises. So we have to be careful about uh, trying to understand better those systems and trying to know and to challenge them in a correct way. And then the, uh, there are se also serious questions whether building human-like intelligence is really uh, possible and desirable. So this is something that some people believe that AI will just be very similar to or to human. So this is something that we have as not as a principle. And then the third thing, uh, 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 and I, uh, I did, uh, I already commented. And the third thing is that, of course, uh, artificial intelligence has a wide range of uh, socioeconomic implications. Uh, you may think on other general purpose technologies such as internet or computer or uh, or uh, electricity. So we might see a lot of uh, so, uh, socioeconomic implications from education, employment to 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 culture and opinion. So it's very uh, to to human rights about there. So it's very important to consider them uh, early in the in the process because we might have to be aware. And this is something we are trying to to investigate. So today, uh, together with uh, with uh, co-organizers, we we want to address four main questions on the on the on this workshop um, related to this problem in the healthcare. Uh, and we are very open to the discussion also from the audience because we are many people here from different backgrounds. The first thing is uh, how artificial intelligence will uh, impact doctors. Uh, for instance, their decisions, their, their capabilities, and also their responsibilities. And uh, also uh, how will uh, uh, those techniques empower them and also the skill them, so as I mentioned before, in the, in the, in the case of doctors. The second question will be how AI will impact patients and uh, also how they will uh, uh, have issues with pr privacy uh, and also their, their health and well-being. It will be positively impact. Uh, uh, I mean, nothing is positive or negative, but we will be the main challenges to, to assess and also check this impact. The third one is about uh, uh, healthcare infrastructure, how, uh, which, is the, which are the challenges of uh, of uh, of using uh, AI and uh, health infrastructure in a in an effective way, 
uh, will uh, this technology help to decrease costs or inc in increase the quality? So this is another question we would like to so uh, to address today. And finally, the fourth one is uh, which are the biggest hurdles to overcome to to take advantage of uh, of uh, those technologies now uh, or in the next future. So these are the the four questions we also. Uh, mentioned about clinical decision making of one of the core uh, areas that we could uh, mm, center our discussion. And I think this, uh, this uh, finish a little bit my introduction to, to, the, to the workshop. We have this uh, agenda, we will have three presentations, then we have a, a break, then we will have uh, three other presentations and finally we have a uh, discussion uh, after lunch. So that's all for me. Thanks you very much for your attention and I hope you will enjoy the workshop.